Zulum is wickedness. It's injustice. It's oppression. Like telling a mountain of lies to attack Iraq. Telling a mountain of lies to attack Afghanistan. Destroying the Twin Towers and then putting the blame on Arabs and Muslims for one day, one day the truth will come out and on that day when the truth come out we will be vindicated. Arabs and Muslims did not do it. Zulkarnain says those who are guilty of acts of Zulm I'll punish them. And when they return to you, you will also punish them. And so when power rests on the foundations of faith, power is used to punish the oppressor. Tell that to any South African and his heart would vibrate. Tell that to Nelson Mandela and he would shake. When power rests on the foundations of faith, power is used to punish the oppressor. And when the oppressor returns to his Lord, the Lord will also punish him. And so when power rests on the foundations of faith, there will be an essential harmony between this world here under and that world beyond. And then he went on to say that those who have faith and whose conduct is righteous, whether you're black or white, and yes, there are white people who have faith and who will live lives of piety and righteousness. Whether you're black or white or brown or yellow, you will be assisted. I'm going to treat you nicely and you'll be rewarded. And so when power rests on the foundations of faith, the religious way of life would be supported. And there would be an essential harmony between life here and life there. Zulkarnain then travel in the opposite direction, the rising of the sun, and so eastwards. And there he came across a people for whom we had provided no cover. Cover from what? That's a big question. The translation that was just given, cover from the sunshine. A people who are not covered from the sunshine will eventually have their skin pigmented. Dark skin people. Or cover from the elements. So a people living a primitive way of life. We don't know which one. How are you going to deal with a primitive people when power rests on the foundations of faith? Kadalika the language in the Quran is so pithy. Thus did Zulkarnain leave them as they were. He had the compassion. He had the good sense and the wisdom. He had the sympathy not to disturb them in their way of life. And then he traveled in a third direction, but the rabbis had not asked for that. But it was understood that that is what they wanted, the third journey. And so Allah sent the answer. You wanted to know about God and Magad, I'll tell you about God and Magad. When he traveled in the third direction, if we had the time, we could argue that it was north. But this book will give you the evidence. It was north. And there between 
two mountains, it passed between two mountain ranges, and it is later confirmed that this is the Caucasus Mountains. The Caucasus Mountains, you remember? White, Caucasian maybe? How did they get the word Caucasian? Between the Caucasus Mountains, this passageway, there he came across a people whose language could not be understood. But this is a world traveler. He has an army with him. Surely he would understand the language of a people, except when that people had never interacted with the rest of the world. When that people had never had trade and commerce with the rest of the world. When that people had never walked on the stage of history, like China, like Babylon, like Mexico, like Africa. Not these people. Who are these people? They speak to Zulkarnay after they had been we were able to understand them. And they said to Zulkarnay, Inna yajuja wa ma'juja musliduna fil ard. O Zulkarnay, Gog and Magog, these two peoples, they are committing fasad in our territory. Fasad, that which corrupts to the extent that it destroys. Fasad, fasad is that which corrupts to the extent that it destroys. Zulkarnain, Gog and Magog are acting in such a way, they are corrupting our society in such a way they are destroying us. Can you help us? Can you build a barrier between us and them we prepare to pay you? Strange, isn't it? If Allah has given to Zulkarnain power, and it is the power with which he can pursue whichever goal he chooses to pursue, but then why does Zulkarnain not go in and simply destroy these wicked people? Teach them the lesson of their life. Why build a barrier? Zulkarnain should say to them, I don't need to build any barrier, I'll just move in and teach them a lesson. They'll never, never, never trouble you anymore. But Zulkarnain agrees to build a barrier. Strange. He says, I don't need your wealth, <laughs> what you have to offer me. In the same way that Solomon has said the same thing to Shiva, alayhi salam, Solomon. He said, provide me with manpower, bring me blocks of iron. And then he built the barrier to block this pass between the two mountain ranges. And after he built the barrier with blocks of iron, remember, iron, no bamboo, no recycled paper, iron. He then said, blow with your bellows, making a furnace. And then he said, bring me the molten copper, which he then poured on the barrier, the wall. The engineers tell me that this would prevent rust. Having built the barrier, now Gog and Magog, who are human beings, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad said alayhi salatu waslam that Ya'juj is an ummah of Banu Adam. That God is a community who have come from Adam. And so too Mecca. Human beings. Like you and I. But with a difference. They could neither penetrate the barrier nor could they scale the barrier. And then Zulkarnain said, and 
listen to his words. هذا رحمة من ربي. This barrier is a blessing, an act of kindness from my Lord. فإذا جاء وعد ربي وبين that time comes of which my Lord has warned, namely that time when the last age will commence and when divine punishment will commence and when the Lord will release into the world the Antichrist. 